so I'm on the water. <laughs> now this is kind of a big step for me because God has shown me a few things that have a lot to do with being out here on the water. In the last several weeks, I've been dealing with uh, some heart issues. I don't know if I've seen those videos or not. And I went in to have some stents put in. And then they said that they were going to... Well, they pulled me out and they told me they didn't even do anything. Sorry about the traffic noise and by a bridge. <laughs> but they didn't even do anything. And that they were going to recommend me for open heart surgery. And my wife spoke up and asked about a certain procedure um, that did not involve open heart surgery. And uh, they kind of said, well, maybe, you know, we can maybe entertain this idea. So I went and met with a surgeon and she just immediately was like, all right, here's the plan. We're going to saw open your sternum. We're going to open up your chest. We're going to take this vein out of your arm. We're going to connect it there. And we're going to take this vein out of your leg and we're going to connect it there. And you might have a stroke and you're probably going to go into AFib and you'll probably get infected and it'll take weeks to recover if you live through it. Um, and when she asked if I had any questions, I just kind of got choked up. And I couldn't really ask, you know, and couldn't really speak. So I, um, uh, asked about the same thing my wife asked about when the other, with the other doctor. And she said, well, that's a possibility. And she scheduled me a point with him today. And I met with him and he said that. Uh, he thought that open heart surgery probably wasn't the best idea, but there was stuff I could do. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it's a two-part process. Or they don't have to open up my heart. They go through an artery in my wrist again. Little robots and cameras and stuff. Anyhow, what God showed me. So why are you on the water? <laughs> you know, like, well... He showed me that there's definitely a word in me that he has to share. And then I had to get back out on the water and that he showed me my laziness. He showed me that ultimately it's my laziness. Like, like I would, you know, he's telling me to get out on the lake and film Bible content and we're going to a cave and film Enoch you know and those things are they're intimidating and quite honestly it's easier just to sit in your house and film something about what the ATF's up to or you know nonsense like that so here I am he, he showed me that you know if you're gonna be fearful of that little stuff but yet here you are facing this thing with your heart you know saw and open your chest here you are dealing with this thing but yeah going into a cave's too hard or getting out on the water is too hard so i'm out here and i've been prayerfully like well what am i doing out here god and the last time i came out to the water he had me go through matthew from chapter 24 until the end, verse by verse. And it was life-changing for me and many people that watched it said it was life-changing for them. So prayerfully, I believe I'm gonna go through Matthew, the whole book from one, one on, on the water. I did, you know, I'll try to get to a quieter place for sure. I just kind of dropped in real quick by this bridge. You know, there's a little ramp back there for canoes and kayaks. I'll try to get somewhere much more quiet for this particular thing, even if I got a row there.
And Matthew, you know, I think it's, you know, as I kind of prayed, well, why? Like, why that? You know, we didn't go through the whole book. We went from 24 on. It was 70 to 80 episodes, maybe 90. I don't know. Maybe less. I don't know. But it was life-changing. I do know that. I do know that. And while I'm out here, I'm probably going to do a little fishing. Kind of brought a pole with me today. Wasn't sure whether I was going to break this out or not, honestly. I think I need to restring it, actually. So maybe not, but I'll get a little fishing done for sure while I'm out here. Of course, I got Benjamin with me. But this is just something that's, uh, when I ask God why, it's because the American church is ignorant to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, that's just what the Spirit told me. The American church is ignorant. To the teaching of Jesus Christ and you can know that because they can say what the teachings of Jesus Christ is and they can talk about it but their actions show the opposite which means they're actually ignorant to the teachings of Jesus Christ if Jesus teaches us to love our neighbors and we hate our neighbors, then we're ignorant. If Jesus teaches us to take care of the least of these and we just take care of ourselves, again, we're ignorant. And, and you're staring at it. We're all staring. At it. That's why it's so incredibly important that, that we go through this book verse by verse because, you know, most of... The Gospels, I mean, quite honestly, is taken out of context to feed doctrines of demons. Most of it. You know, people will grab a verse. You know, Jesus will sit there and talk for three or four chapters. And they'll just take a verse and run with it, man. It had nothing to do with anything he's talking about. At all. They're ignorant. Just call it what it is. If I say look up and you look down, you're ignorant to directions. Just face it. If I say go east and you go west, you're ignorant to directions. If I say don't run and you start sprinting, you're ignorant to directions. And that's really what Jesus has done. And, and, and he's got to be, well, let's just say it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the Antichrist will eventually rain, which is why it's so incredibly important that as Christians, we understand what it is Jesus is trying to teach us, because otherwise we'll be deceived, easily deceived. Uh, most of our country is already easily deceived. Easily deceived. Not even kind of deceived. Easily deceived. It's... And you can stare at it. There's people out there that would do anything to get their way politically or, you know, do anything to get their way when it comes to who they want in office. And they'll raise their hands in church on Sunday and praise Jesus and, oh, I love my Lord. But they won't do anything for him. They'll do nothing. They'll do anything for the politician. They'll do nothing for Jesus. Like, not even throw 20 bucks in the plate, half of them. I, you know, that, that, all they want is my money. And, you know, let's face it, they're right in a lot of circumstances, but why do you go to that church in the first place if all they want is your money? So if you're going to a church where they're actually teaching the, the things that Jesus taught, not just by word, but by action...
and you're giving money to them, well, then they're probably using it to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, take care of the widows, orphans, visit the prisoners and the sick, go out and minister to people, raise disciples, perform miracles, that kind of thing. So that's why it's so important, I believe, to go through the book of Matthew, verse by verse, to just get back out on the water and do it again because the world is ignorant to the teachings of Jesus Christ. So there you go. I, I hope you join us. Um, we're going to get started tomorrow. Um, you know, understanding the lineage of Jesus Christ is kind of the first part of Matthew and and that part's extremely important to understand the path that led to him and who those people were along that path. It's incredibly beautiful. And it's important. It's important because it points towards his Godhead. And it, it just... I think I'm going to try really hard not to get frustrated through this process too really lean on that spirit because I, you know, I, I think the reason I'm so upset is because the spirit's upset. Um, you look around and you see what the Christian church in America is today and it's not okay. Um, it's not really, I don't, I don't know if I'd even call it, I mean, they're definitely not the church because the church is not a building. The church is me and you we are the church so if you go into the building with a plus sign on it and that's all you do and then you come out and you do nothing you are not the church just face it you're not and if the ministry at your church doesn't leave the four walls of your church you have no ministry whether you're a pastor i don't care who you are if it doesn't leave the church you have no ministry and you need to really begin to question yourself, you know, are we feeding hungry people? Or are we just feeding ourselves? What is it we're actually doing out of here at this church or AKA the building with a plus sign on it? What are we actually doing there?